Summary of Mother to Mother by Sindive Magona The narrative of Mother to Mother jumps around in time, covering the lives of the narrator, Mandisa, from her early childhood, through the birth of her children, to her son, Nxalasai's murder of the girl, a white American driving through their township of Gugilitu. The girl, Mandisa, and Nxalasai talk about what they did on the day of the murder and the morning after. There are also parts of the book where Mandisa talks to the mother of the girl. She asks rhetorical questions about the girl's life and parenting, expresses her sadness over the girl's death, and tries to explain Xolosai's actions without trying to excuse them. In terms of time, the book starts with Mandisa's youth. The South African government made her and her brother Kaya move from Bluvliai to Gogilitu. They had grown up there. Many students' educations were put on hold because of this, but Mandisa and Kaya were able to stay in school for a while, at least until Kaya got his girlfriend Nono pregnant and Mandisa got pregnant by chance after having sex with her boyfriend China without penetrating him. Mama, Mandisa's mother, is mad at her daughter at first because she thinks that her pregnancy will make the whole family look bad, but she comes to love Mandisa and her baby boy in the end. China is no longer interested in Mandisa emotionally, but Mandisa's parents make her marry him anyway. They lived together for two unhappy years until China ran away and disappeared for good. Mandisa then moves into her own hockey and does her best to raise Msalasai. She has another child, Lunga, with a man named Lungile, and then marries a man named Dwadwa. Sizawi, her only daughter, is born to them. Mandisa talks about how Mxalasai grew up. After seeing two older boys, Zatsi and Zamo, die, he stops talking for a few years. He was a chatty boy who was ahead of his age. He is able to talk again, but during the time he was silent, Mandisa realized how angry she was at him for making her have an unwanted pregnancy and changing her future in a big way. Mxalasai joins political groups for young people, like the young lions, as he gets older. This group is getting more and more aggressive and radicalized. They burn cars and houses and have even killed black South Africans around their township. On the day of the tragedy, the girl is taking some of her black South African friends home from college when Xolosai and others see her in her car. A group of guys chase her out of the car, but it is Xolosai who stabs her to death. Mandisa finds out about this later. The first night after the murder, she was worried and wondered if her son, who hadn't come home yet, had something to do with it. When the cops go to Mandisa's house late at night, it adds to her doubts. Reverend Manana comes by in the morning and tells Mandisa how to see her son, but he is not very clear. She goes after them and eventually reunites with Mxalasai, who soothes her before turning himself in to the police. About the author Sindai Umagona was born in the town of Umtata in the eastern part of South Africa. She grew up in the city of Gugulitu, which is near Cape Town. She went to elementary school in Gugulitu, but for high school she took a course by mail. Then, she went to the University of South Africa and got her bachelor's degree. In 1981, she moved to New York to get her master's degree in social work. She did housework and taught school in the time between. Magona worked for the United Nations after getting her master's degree, first in radio and then in the public information department, until she retired in 2003 and moved back to Cape Town, where she was born. Magona wrote her whole life. In her younger years, she wrote personal prose, short stories, and books. After she retired, she started to write for children. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.